Okay, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a collaboration with myself, basically, between my two channels. I have my Poor Painting by Double Reno channel, and then I also have a, a Double Reno channel that is Lichtenberg wood burning. And it's basically you take a high voltage transformer and you use a electrolyte solution, which is baking soda and water, and you burn electricity through the wood and it leaves these lightning-like figures in the wood. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to burn the top half of this board, maybe the top third of this board with the Lichtenberg figures, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do an epoxy pour painting on the bottom on the rest of it. And I'm also going to put clear epoxy over the burns where you still see those and then the rest will just be colored epoxies down on the bottom. So it's going to be a combination of the two. Some I've wanted to do for a long time. I've tried it once. Uh, it failed on me. Uh, I got so many bubbles up out of the wood that I couldn't keep up with them and it ended up ruining the board. It looked really cool except for the bubbles. I mean it was a good concept but the process did not work like it was supposed to. So I've come up with a new idea on this one of, of sealing the wood prior to putting the epoxy on and uh, hopefully that will eliminate my bubble problem. And also I'm using a piece of hard maple on this one which is a lot more dense wood, tighter grain wood, so I'm hoping that it won't uh, produce the bubbles that the poplar wood did. So anyway, I'm going to uh, finish coating this. This is a baking soda solution that I'm coating on here. I'm going to let this sit for a little while and then I'm going to come and you can do the, uh, we'll do the burn on it and then once we get all that done we'll come back, we'll seal it and then we'll come back and we'll do the pour painting on top of it. Okay, I've let this sit and soak for maybe close to five minutes or so. So I'm going to start burning. And for those of you that are watching this video on my pour painting channel, if you've never seen the list of burning, burning, uh, there will be a link down in the description. You just got to hit the show more button. And I'll put a link up at the top too uh, where you can go and watch some of my list of burning wood burning. Anyway, and if you're watching this on my Lichtenberg channel and you want to see some of my pour painting stuff, there will be a link for that too. So anyway, uh, I'm going to start burning it. I'm using a microwave oven, transformer, and my Variac. Like so I'm going to attempt to keep my burns up on the top third of the bar the board. We'll see. Okay, well, that's it. That was a nice easy burn. The wood burned really good. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to clean it out with a, I just take a brass brush, a soft brush, so I don't scratch the wood deep. I'll go clean all the carbon and stuff out of the burns. I'll bring it back and then we'll bleach the wood out to get it all nice and even. Okay, I got my board cleaned out. Uh, the burns come out looking really cool. And if you're watching this on my painting channel, you you know, it's first maybe the first time you've ever seen this, but... It's a really cool process. Uh, like I said, if you, if you want to see more of them, I've got tons of videos making these. I've got some uh, links to how I made the machines to create these on my Daily Motion website. Uh, YouTube does not allow those videos on their channel. So if you go to dailymotion.com and then search Double Reno, then you'll find those videos there. So this is oxalic acid. It's a wood bleach. And basically what it does is it just bleaches the wood back out, takes any staining, and brings it, the wood back to its natural color. It's not real dramatic on this particular wood. Some woods it is, but I still use it on everything. It just helps kind of take the staining out, get my wood back to the natural uniform color 
that it was before I started. So I just paint this on and let it sit for two or three minutes and then I may paint one or two more coats just depending on how bad the wood was stained. This is not bad here so I'll probably just put two coats on it. So, And then when I get done with this I take it and I rinse it off with cold water. Uh, you got to be sure you rinse this oxalic acid off. Cold water takes it off just fine but you have to rinse it off where it will react with whatever finish you put on the board afterwards. So I'm going to let that soak for a minute, put another coat on it. I'll go rinse it off, let it dry, put a real light sand on it, and it'll come back and then we'll do the sealing on it. I am going to get this thing ready for epoxy now. I, I did some experimenting with uh, some sanding sealer on some boards before applying epoxy, trying to keep the bubbles from coming up. And I had some success with that, but not as much as what I would like. And in the process of doing that, and this is another video that will probably already be posted by the time this one comes out. And what I ended up with the most success with is basically putting a seal coat on. And I should have known that. There's all kinds of videos on using seal coats before you apply epoxy onto wood like countertops and stuff like that. So that worked actually pretty good. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to put a thin seal coat of my epoxy resin on this. And then I will use my heat gun and my torch to remove any bubbles that I get in it and just let it seal and then I'll come back and I'll do my flood coat which will be my pour painting done with the epoxy resins so I'm using my Art and Glow this is my they're all nasty and dirty looking this was the end of this so I used the end of these bottles up I got new ones in today so I'm good to go but the Art and Glow resin is what I like using it's got a 40 minute set time it's pretty fluid, it's easy to work with. So I've already got it mixed up. I mixed about two ounces up. And I've got a little silicone uh, squeegee that I'm going to use to kind of spread it out nice and thin. And then i got my heat gun over there, so I'll use that to pop any bubbles that do come up. So I've already got this mixed up. I mixed up about two ounces. So I'm just going to kind of give this a pour across here. Save a little bit. I don't want to use it all up at once. I still got to hit my edges and stuff too so but I'm just looking for a nice thin coat to get everything sealed good to keep any bubbles from coming up so I'm going to concentrate on the top here first and then I'll start working towards the edges and this little silicone squeegee I got that I think it was a two pack I can't remember what I paid for but I got those off of Amazon also so and I got a a little hair right there off of something. I don't know what that came from, but I can get that out. Okay, that's gone. And the thing that I'm not really sure yet, and I'm going to probably give it a couple hours, is how long to let this coat sit. So I'm going to go ahead, got my top good here. So I'm going to go ahead and just take my fingers and run across the sides and get a good coat on my ends. I'm not worried about anything that runs underneath. It's easy to, whatever wants to run underneath, I'll let it run underneath. It's relatively easy to clean up after the fact. On the bottom, I can just take my Orville sander and sand that off. That's not an issue. So I'm just going to get all my edges coated good. I'm not getting much in the way of bubbles on this so far, which is good. In my little test deal, I did a piece of hard maple, which is this, and then I did a piece of uh, red cedar. And the red cedar was worse with bubbles than the uh, hard maple was, and it's just because of the tightness of the grain is all that is. Well, that's to be expected. The looser the grain of the wood, the more bubbles you're going to have come up. And all I'm trying to do here really is just get a good seal of the grain. And that way when I put my flood coat for my painting on top, I shouldn't get any bubbles. Okay, so I feel like i got a good coat all the way around on my edges. on my bevel. I'm doing this inside and I'm doing it inside because of one of the level uh, 
the level surface. I need to get me a table, outside table. I have better luck with less dust outside than I do inside. You know, I change the filters and stuff inside and everything, but I still end up with a lot of dust. So I always end up with dust in my epoxy, but I can't really completely control that. Okay, so I'm going to get my heat gun. Okay, so now I'm going to come back. That's just to help level it out a little bit. Now you can see I'm getting bubbles popping up now. You can see them across here and across here. Torch really quick. Okay, not a lot of time in any one spot or you will burn your resin. Okay, now the other thing that I did on my experiment too is anywhere these bubbles were as opposed to torching them. I just essentially came through here for a period of time, especially on these burns where they want to pop up on these burns. This stuff is nice and fluid now that I heated it. So I just come back and just rub in these burns and it pops the bubbles. I think it, it pops the bubbles and I think it helps maybe push that epoxy down in those burns a little bit better. But it, somehow or another, it helps seal them off because I, I did this on my experiment piece and it, it seemed to help quite a bit, especially on the red cedar piece that I was having the most trouble with the bubbles on. So in the end, I got a really thin coat on here, but as I said previously, all I'm really doing here is sealing this. My flood coat's going to be my final coat that'll give me that nice glassy look. Hopefully any imperfections that are in here, I've got a few places where it's slightly higher than the other. Hopefully when I, my flood coat will cover any of that up. As this stuff dries, it tends, tends to flatten out and level out, so. Okay. So I think I'm gonna go with that. So I'm gonna let this sit for a couple hours until it's at least tacky. That way I'll feel good that no more air can come up through it. And then I'll come back and I'll do my actual pour on top of it. This thing is set up for over probably over two hours. In some areas it's dry, some areas it's probably still a little tacky where it was a little thicker. I've mixed up, I had to break out a new thing of my Art & Glow resin. This is my new one I just got in yesterday. I mixed up, I've got eight ounces total. I've got about two ounces of clear. And then my colors here, I've got a, it's called a es Esmeraldas, a Platinum Mica, and a Vampire's Blood. And this is all my micas already mixed in with the resins. Really cool looking resins. That's that one. And that's that one. And then I've got my clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to put my clear in first. Because I don't really want the color over the burns. If some of it gets over it, it's not going to be the end of the world. But in general, I want just a flood coat with the clear. I'm going to save just a little bit of that in there if I need it for touch up.
So that pretty well covers that. Now, I thought about doing a flip cut pour with this, but I decided against it. I'm just going to do a kind of a random mixture pour across here with all three of my colors. saving a little bit of each of these so I can come back and fill in. I'm going to go ahead and blow that and get a good coverage first, then I'll come back and add whatever colors I feel I need to. just keep working on the bubbles. I got a few more popping up. This is normal bubbles though for any normal epoxy. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that again with a with a heat gun. It's almost making cells in some areas. Okay, I still have a few minor bubbles popping up here and there, so I'm going to go ahead and come off video because it's going to take a while. That's the thing with any of these epoxy resin pours, you got to let them sit for a little while and bubbles will keep producing and you just got to stay on top of them until it gets to that point where they quit popping up. But there's still a few bubbles popping up over on this side, but it uh, looks like my I mean, from this clear side, that come out perfect. So, just where this is a little bit thicker, I still got a few bubbles popping up. So, I'll keep hitting those with a heat gun and with a torch until it gets set. We'll come back and take one more look at it. Okay, it took probably 20 minutes before it finally quit making any bubbles at all. I've let it sit for probably 10 and it hasn't produced any more bubbles. So, this is pretty much my finished board. So, I'm very, very tickled with this. Uh, I got my clear, got nice burns up on top. I got my pour painting down on the bottom with my epoxy resins and I'm really happy with it. It's something different, it's something that helped me tie both of my channels in together. Okay, here it is finished. This thing's dried for, I don't know, probably about 48, I'm sorry, about 24 hours. It's been maybe a little over 24 hours. Came out really good. Really happy with it. The epoxy finish is unbeatable. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work, but 
anyway so I'm real happy I got my combination of my Lichtenberg burns and I got my combination of my pore painting with my epoxy resin and the micas uh, I really appreciate you watching like I said again if you're watching on my Lichtenberg wood burning channel go check out some of my painting and I do some epoxy stuff some acrylic and then other way around if you're checking out my pore painting channel check out some of my Lichtenberg wood burning Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe, share my videos.